Okay, in this lesson, we are going to do an introduction to waves. These are learners' outcomes. So, what are some of the waves that you see in nature? I think perhaps the most common is water waves. So, this one of picture. Okay, you see uh, water being moved or water wave being formed. Or a smaller version is a water ripple. So you see something like this. Or even human waves. So you see that the people are in a wave pool full of people and the water wave move along. Okay, or even something interesting like this. So generally, waves are vibrations or disturbance that are transmitted from the source to its surrounding or specific location. So something like this. So you find that there would be a disturbance that moves uh, or vibration that moves up and down in this case, and the disturbance will be transmitted uh, outwards, okay, to its surrounding or maybe a specific destination. So besides water waves that you can see, there are many many other types of waves. Some examples are uh, a wave that is on a rope or a string, or a sound wave, actually a sound is a form of wave but you can't see it, or uh, the radio waves that, uh, that enable radio station to broadcast their transmission to your radio, or even the microwave uh, that is residing in your kitchen is used also using some form of wave. So you find that most of the waves that you encounter seems to have the feature of repeating itself. But I'd like to emphasize that it does not mean that if it doesn't repeat itself, it is not a wave. Okay, the wave that we are going to study uh, will be repeating itself in identical ways. So using an example of a string wave using a simulation. So we find that this is just simulation of a string and we'll generate waves by playing a play button over here. So we see that this is quite similar in terms of pattern um, that you see in the water. Okay. So we see in slow motion. So we see this is a very nice pattern of a wave. Another point to take note of is that, um, do you remember that we say that as long as there's some disturbance and uh, transmit out is considered a wave. So this is also considered as in a wave. So I'll just have a disturbance and as the wave moves down to its uh, specific destination outside, it is this is considered a wave. Next, we'll come to the terms of wave. As you can see from simulation, this would look something similar to a ideal wave. Okay, uh, we have some terms. Okay, the peak is known as the crest, and the bottom is known as the trough, and the dotted line means that it is uh, at rest. Uh, when the wave is not being disturbed, it is at rest, or the string will be actually flat. Okay, so this is a so-called reference time. Okay, um, then we'll always talk about uh, the amplitude of the wave. So it is the distance between um, the flat line and the crest. And we also talk about the wavelength. The wavelength is could be considered as in identified by a length that is from the crest to the crest, or from the center to the next center or it could also be from the trough to the trough. Okay, you find that identifying from a crest to a crest or a trough to a trough will be easier. Okay, one incorrect measurement of the amplitude is that uh, students make is that they use a, a trough as a comparison and the crest as a comparison and they measure a distance from the crest to the trough. Okay, this is not the amplitude. Okay, this is incorrect. So what should be correct? We should start from the always start from the center line where the wave is at rest and measure vertically to the crest or maybe to the trough. They are the same. Or if you really really want to do that, the amplitude would be the vertical height from the trough to the crest, but you need to divide by two. Another feature of the wave is that wave transfer energy, but not the matter. When you look at this particular wave over here, 
it's quite tempting to think that if I place the object over here, it will actually follow the wave and will travel along together the wave and reach over here. Okay. But the fact is that if you look at a wave carefully, any object that's in the wave actually do not move together with the wave. So if you look at this, uh, the person that's over here, okay, this blue person, you find that it's always bobbing, even though the wave is actually have moved, have moved already, but the person is still always uh, stuck over here. Okay. So as the water wave moves past them, they actually did not move the people along with it. So they they are just only uh, or hanging around at the area. So it's important that you understand that it's the disturbance that moved down, that has moved down and in turn transfer the energy from the source to the destination. But the material that the wave is made of actually does not move together with the wave. So if you look very carefully again, uh, even though you have this wave of uh, disturbance that has moved down, but the person that is creating the wave actually just standing still and just stand up and down and they actually did not move together with the wave even though that seems to be so. So again, we'll use a simulation of a wave. Okay, so this is a wave. So as you look at the wave, okay, and you notice that the green balls over here, you find that even though there seems to be something that is moving across, but actually if you observe the green balls, they are just only moving up and down, up and down. Okay, they actually do not move together with the wave. So this is what is meant by uh, wave transmit the disturbance down, but it doesn't transmit the matter down. Next, we'll come to a type of waves. There are two types of wave, uh, generally, transverse and longitudinal. The difference between them is that the vibration of the wave particles are slightly different. A transverse wave. Okay, so this is what you are uh, familiar with. You find that the vibration or the displacement of the medium or the particle is actually perpendicular to the direction of the wave. What do you mean by that? So you find that the vibration is in this case up and down. The direction of the wave travel is left to right. So you find that this is perpendicular to each other. But for longitudinal wave, you find that this is the example of longitudinal wave. And the vibration of the medium is parallel to the direction of the wave. So we find that the movement is left to right and the uh, direction in this case is moving towards the right. So in, the, in these two directions is they are parallel to each other. Some examples of transverse wave like, is like the rope wave or the string wave or even a water ripple um, is actually a transverse wave. So we find that this is a water ripple and let's just on it. Okay, so you find that this is actually a transverse wave. So we find that the uh, the disturbance is up and down, but the direction of the travel is actually um, outwards. Okay, one interesting is that if you rotate to the top view, this will be the pattern that look, it looks like. Okay, so this is the ripple. Then for longitudinal wave, one very simple example would be sound. So these are air particles that you don't see. Okay, this is a speaker. You find that sound is nothing more than just some vibration. Okay, so let's turn on. You find that this is what's happening. And the disturbance that actually passed down the and cause the, uh, the air particles to move or vibrate. So this is the sound wave. Okay. So if you look at the grayscale, it will look something like this. Notice that the sound wave is also, in terms of pattern, it's very similar to the ripple that you saw just now. Okay, so this is the end of today's lesson. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.